Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Intermediate Accounting 17th edition video series. Uh, this is a solution walkthrough for the from the Kiso, Weingen, and Warfield textbook. This is exercises 15.6 and 15.7. Uh, this is coming from the uh, generosity of, of Wiley um, or John Wiley and Sons. Uh, they have kindly allowed me to make these videos. The authors of the textbook are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingen, and Terry Warfield. Uh, I was born and raised on the sixth edition of this textbook many moons ago. Uh, it's by far, I consider it to be the gold standard. It's a great textbook. Um, and uh, let's get ahead and go on, do it. Let's do it. Uh, the questions used in this presentation are copyright 2019 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. The solution presentation is copyright 2019 and 2021 by Bennett Tchaikovsky, all rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the textbook or Wiley. Okay, so let's take a look at our exercises for today. Okay, so we have up here, we have Lindsay Hunter Corporation has authorized issue 50,000 shares, a $5 par value common stock, if you want to understand what's wrong with this statement, <laughs> go back and look at the video I did for exercise 15, 2, and 3. Uh, you would never have something that's issued at $5 par value unless you're Berkshire Hathaway and they have a share price of, I think, almost, you know, it's, what is it, 400 grand. Okay, so during 2020, Lindsay took part in the following selected transactions. Okay, so the first one here is they issued 50,000 shares of stock at $45 per share, less cost related to the issuance of the stock totaling 7,000. Okay. So what is the amount of cash that they're going to be receiving, right? So we've got here, we've got a date. Okay. And that's also just for our own sanity. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring forward, call forth, the accounting exorcist. Okay, we're gonna go right up here and we'll go like this. I'll just move this down a bit. So we're in the owner's equity section of the balance sheet, right? So these are gonna typically, whenever I'm issuing stock, I'm gonna be showing increases to that with credits. Okay, so the amount of cash I'm receiving, okay, is going to be 5,000 shares at $45 per share minus the $7,000 costs, right? Or basic costs related to the issuance. So this is gonna be 5,000 shares at 45 per share minus the 7,000 costs, okay? Now, in terms of the credits for this account, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna credit common stock at par. We always credit common stock at par. This has a $5 par value. So this is gonna be 5,000 times five or 25,000. And then we're gonna credit the remaining amount to additional paid in capital common stock. And this is gonna be 218,000 minus 25,000 or it's gonna give us 193,000. Now, when it comes to that seven grand, right? If I look at over here, like stock issuance costs, treat the issue as a reduction of the amounts paid in. Okay, so basically you would essentially reduce the amount of, you're gonna reduce the amount of cash that's being received. So we're reducing this amount by, you know, by 7,000 bucks, which should be 225, but we're paying 7,000. And then over here, we're also gonna be going through and basically the difference is buried into additional paid in capital common stock. So right here, so my description is to record issuance of common stock. And we'll say here, uh, record issuance of 25,000, excuse me, 5,000 shares of common stock at 45 per share less 7,000 issuance costs. Right, why am I putting so much detail just so if somebody is gonna come back and review my work, they can kind of go through and understand that. Okay, 
I issued a thousand shares of stock for a land appraised at $50,000. $50, the stock was actively traded on a national exchange at approximately $46 per share on the date of issuance. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the value of the shares that we're giving up. Because again, the appraise, appraisal is an appraisal. The only time I would really be concerned is that if the land appraised for less than the value of the shares that we were uh, giving up. So let's go through over here. We've got land. Basically, this is going to be at $46 per share times 1,000 shares. We're going to ignore the appraised value. And I'll show you just in a moment why I kind of talked about this on exercise 15.3, a little bit more of an in-depth discussion. But over here, I'm gonna debit land, I'm gonna credit common stock at par, right? That's what, it, so land is an asset, record the asset with a debit, right? Common stock at par, well, how do I go through and record that? It's basically going to be a thousand shares at $5 per share. Okay, so this is gonna be 5,000. And then my difference is gonna to go to additional paid in capital common stock. So this will be 41,000. Okay, so 46,000 minus 5,000, okay. Okay, when I go through and look at this, if I were to go through and just hypothetically, like let's talk about this, if I were to go through and record land at 50 grand, right? What becomes my problem? Well, my problem becomes I'm now recording the issuance of the stock at $50 per share, right? Because if it's 50 grand at a thousand shares, that's at 50 per share. The rate or the basically the value on the exchange is basically 46 bucks per share. And so it looks like I'm overstating my assets. So that's why we're going through and choosing the, the stock value. Now, if for some reason, we, this, it, if it wasn't being traded on a national exchange and you know, we could show comparables, we may be able to go with that land value. But again, if it's telling you it's being traded on a national stock exchange, boom, you're done, okay? So, I purchased $500 of treasury stock at $43 per share. The treasury shares purchased were issued in 2016 at $40 per share. Okay, so that second part, we're gonna totally ignore, okay? I don't care about when they were actually issued. It's just about when we go through and buy them back. When I, rec when I record the repurchase of my own shares, my cash is going down. Okay, so this is going to be 500 shares times 43 per share. I'm here, I'm going to debit treasury stock. And I'm going to debit treasury stock for the same dollar amount. Now, when I go through and record this, right, I'm just going to say to record purchase of treasury stock. Okay, and I talked about this in the last video. But you know what is treasury stock? It's when I go back and I repurchase my own shares. So again, the best company to look at. And the thing that I really want all of you to be doing at home is get used to looking up publicly traded companies. This is gonna make you a superstar at work because if you study your competitors' Ks and Qs real a lot, you're gonna gain a lot of insight into how that business runs. Treasury stock. When I repurchase my own shares, I'm debiting treasury stock. I'm crediting cash. I'm going to show this over here as a reduction to my owner's equity. Okay. Now I come over here and let's take a look. So that's prepared journal entries and the cost method. I think it's the cost method. Sounds good to me. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this is that I want to actually kind of go through and do this with the journal entries. So that this is exercise 15.7, so effective treasury stock transactions on financials. 
Joe Dumars has a fought, has outstanding 40,000 shares of $5 par, has outstanding 40,000 shares of $5 par common stock, which has been issued at $30 per share. Joe Dumars then entered in the following transactions. Okay, so I purchased 5,000 treasury shares at $45 per share. So when I'm buying treasury stock, Okay. This is always going to be the entry that I'll be making. Doesn't matter what I sold it for before, I'm rebuying my, repurchasing my own shares. So this is going to be 5,000 at 45. So this is going to be to record the purchase of treasury stock. Okay. So right over here, date, account, debit, credit. That's how we go through and record this. Okay. Now I'm reselling 2,000 of these treasury shares. So this is 5,000 uh, purchased 5,000 shares at $45 per share. Okay. So I'm taking these off the market. Now, the other thing too is when I look at issued and outstanding shares. Okay, so when I'm looking at issued and outstanding shares for Joe Dumars, if you don't who know who that is, a uh, very famous basketball player. Okay, so when they repurchase their own shares, right, what's going to happen with the actual amount of issued and outstanding, right? And what's the difference between those two? Issued means I actually put them out there and I sold them out in the open market. Outstanding means, well, have I repurchased any of these? So after number one, so we'll call this example zero. After number one, my issue's not going to change, but my outstanding is now going to be down by 5,000 shares. Why is that? Because they're no longer outstanding. I've returned them momentarily to the treasury. Okay. Let's take a look at this next one here. Okay. I purchased 5,000 treasury shares. I mean, I resold. 2,000 of the treasury shares at $49 per share. Let's see the easy part first. I'm getting cash right over here. And when I'm debiting cash, it's gonna be for 49 times 2,000. Okay, so when I'm dealing with treasury stock transactions, okay, so over here, so when I bought my treasury stock, I had over here 225,000, okay? Where did this come from? It was 5,000 shares at 45. Okay, now, what happens here is that when I go through, so I've debited cash, I'll put a cash account here too. Okay, so now I'm getting cash of 98,000, okay? Now, when I, re when I credit treasury stock, okay, I'm gonna do it for the cost I paid for the shares. So this is gonna be 45 or what I paid for those shares times the 2,000 treasury shares sold, okay? So this is gonna be here, 45,000 times 2,000. I mean, 45 times 2,000, uh, wow, I'm gonna get this, wow, I'm losing it. Uh, right over here, so I got 90,000, okay? Now, when I look at this, right, my transaction does not balance, right? Now, I would kind of want to instinctively say, oh, I made money. But what we're going to do instead is I'm gonna credit additional paid in capital treasury stock. So over here, I've credited the treasury stock on the cost of what I paid for it. And now the difference is gonna be what I need to do to balance or right over here. This is gonna be additional paid in capital treasury stock or basically the four times the 2000 treasury shares. Okay, so this is gonna to be to record sale of treasury stock. Okay, so right over here, I'm gonna credit additional paid in capital treasury stock for a grand. Let's look at this next one over here. Okay, now I'm reselling 500 of the shares at $40 per share. Okay, so I've got cash coming through, 500 at 40. Okay, 
Okay, so right over here. Now, when I go to credit my treasury stock, what I need to do is what did I pay for these 500 shares? Well, I paid $45 per share. Okay, so I got 225,000. I have a problem, okay? What's my problem? Ooh, hold on, this is a big problem. What did I do here? Okay, so right over here, so 20,000, not 200,000, 22,500. Okay, so now what's going to happen here is that, well, I, it looks like I have a loss, but our rule is, is we do not recognize gains or losses on the sale of our own shares. So here I'm going to debit additional paid in capital treasury stock, basically for the 2,500, okay. All right, so this is what we're gonna do over here. Okay, now this is how we go through and do it. I'm gonna take one more, I'm gonna give us one more little example here to kind of make sure we really understand the concepts, but I wanna come up here and take a look at this. So we've got transaction two, the shares issued will never change, but since I've reissued 2,000 shares, this is now going to be 37,000. And then over here for number three, this is now going to be 37,500 or 35, 37,000, which are now my outstanding shares plus 500. So I still have, right? So I still have, hold on. So over here, and we'll just go ahead and record the used transaction. So if I look at what's in my T account as of right now, in terms of the, and I can also update here the cash. So in terms of my treasury shares, I've got over here 112,500. Now, does that make sense? Well, if we have 2,500 treasury shares remaining, right? Because we bought 5,000, I resold 2,000, I resold 5,500, so I should have 2,500 left. So just to kind of check our balance, if I take 2,500 times 45, I'm gonna get a 1,125. So I know that that balance is good. Now let's do something a little extra here. So like, let's assume that 1,000 shares were sold for $10 per share, okay? So how do we do it, okay? So the, the process is really going to be the same. So the cash I receive is gonna be 1,000 times 10 or $10,000. When I credit treasury stock, right? What I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna take, what did I pay for those 1,000 shares? I paid $45 a share. So I'm now gonna have 45,000. But as I look at this over here, right? So what do I do? Now, the challenge I have is over here with additional paid in capital treasury stock is that this balance over here is a credit of 5,500. The rule is I cannot take additional paid in capital treasury stock always has to have a credit balance. Okay, so I can take, I have to take this account down to zero. How do I take it down to zero? I'm gonna debit additional paid in capital treasury stock over here for 5,500. Okay, so 5,500 over here from this hypothetical fake transaction, right? Fake news. Okay, over here, now I've got a dilemma, right? Do my total debits equal my total credits? They do not, right? And so what do I need to do? I'm in this case, I cannot recognize a gain or a loss on, on treasury stock. I cannot have a debit balance in my additional paid in capital treasury stock account. So I'm in a debit retain earnings. So this is going to be, um, let's see here, this is gonna be 45,000 minus 15,500 or 29,500. 
for it to get to 49, 45,000. Okay, so that is how we go through and record these transactions. Now, this is probably more than what you wanted, but I'm doing it this way because I think it's really important to kind of understand how this, before we go through and do this chart, how this actually works. Okay, so on transaction one, what happened? My assets decreased because I paid the cash. My liabilities were no effect. My shareholders' equity decreased. Why did it decrease? Because when I'm showing treasury stock, right, that's being repurchased or my shares that are being repurchased, that in effect is decreasing my shareholders' equity account, okay? So APIC, uh, no effect, retained earnings, no effect, net income, no effect. And in fact, we can write no effect on net income for all of these, why? It's because I cannot put a gain or loss of my own shares into, uh, if I buy or sell my own shares, self-dealing. Okay, right here, number two, what happened here? Well, my assets actually increased, right? Liabilities, no effect. Shareholders' equity increased. My additional paid in capital increased, right? So we're going through right over here that because I increased my additional paid in capital as a result of issuing this treasury stock and my retained earnings was no effect. Over here for number three, my cash increased. My liabilities, no effect. Remember, we're really just dealing with assets and owner's equity. Shareholders' equity. Um, this here uh, had an increase as a result of the sale because I'm basically increasing by, by going over here and crediting treasury stock. My overall owner's equity is increasing, but my additional paid in capital, right? By going through here and having to make this $2,500 debit, this is actually going to be a decrease and my retained earnings is going to be no effect. The last example, again, which I just made up, right? That would have assets increasing, liabilities, no impact, shareholders' equity would be increasing for the amount of the additional, by the amount of the treasury stock. Additional paid in capital is going to get wiped out for the 5,500, and then the retained earnings would actually decrease. Net income would be no impact. So I want to thank you for joining me here today. Um, and again, a huge shout out to Wiley for allowing me to make these videos. Uh, there's a great textbook. Um, and again, there's, a, there's something called zlibrary.org. Zlibrary.org has a lot of different books and you can find this and many other free ones for your use. Have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great one.